so it's the 9th of October today. It would have been my dad's birthday. He would have been meeting his grandchild in a few weeks time. But all that's going through my head is that he'll never meet her and it's just really, really sad. But we've got our growth scan today. So at least we've got a distraction and we get to see baby again. So I've put dad's jumper on so that he can come with us. Alrighty, growth scan was successful. Right in the middle. 50, right in the middle. 53. So she is bang on average. She said she's weighing fine, she's head down. Her back is on my right side. Femurs are now five and a half centimeters now. What's that? Sounds about that. So bigger than the three that they were in the first scan, but still <laughs> nice and small. What did she say she weighed? Three pounds? Three pounds fifteen she now weighs. 15. We very mm. nearly have a four pound baby already. But she said that she's very, very happy. So I started getting really, really bad pain from the baby and then I started to get really bad back pain and I was like, is this labour? <laughs> I've asked myself that far too many times, but I know you get back pain in labour. The pain was the worst pain I've felt yet and she is being absolutely nuts all evening, like just not settling. Mason just came over and he put his head to my belly and he said he could hear all the water in my belly sloshing around everywhere. I've been lying down for about an hour. The pain has stopped now, but she's still just going nuts. She's got hiccups at the moment. like even my dressing gown touching my skin feels tender. It's now nearly midnight and she's still been kicking this whole time. I just feel so sore. It's just relentless. And it got to a point of a couple of hours ago where I just had a breakdown and I think I just struggled to cope a little bit and then I felt like a bad mum because I was like I'm already struggling to cope and she's not even here yet. I've been awake since six o'clock. Baby is still going nuts. My stomach is so sore. Anything touching it, like the duvet, my clothes, anything, it's like it's bruised everywhere. I've just been to the doctors for my flu vaccine and my COVID vaccine. And sitting in the waiting room, I nearly just walked out and got back in my car because my baby was just kicking so much. Even now as I sit here in the car, and what you see on the outside is only the tip of the iceberg because she's moving even more on the inside. <sighs> it's just unbearable. I just feel like crying. I got up this morning. <sighs> Mason slept on the couch, I think it's my snoring and a bit of insomnia. Anyway, I went downstairs and he asked me how I was and I just burst into tears. Um, he cuddled me for a while until I stopped crying, calmed down. And I just feel really weak. Oh gosh, you won't stop. I just feel like I'm giving up now. You can even see her moving through my jumper. I mean, this is like three layers of clothing and this jumper is thick. Her movements are oh, so intense. I just want them to stop. So I'm gonna just go for a walk around the town and see if it'll help, but I don't think it will. I've had to put a pad on because now that she's moving so much, I don't know if she presses on a gland or she presses on something, but I just pour discharge every time I'm stood up. So. <laughs> town might help but it didn't even sell I was crying before I even got back to the car I feel like such an idiot I just wanted to stop she's just not stopping It's been like two hours since I filmed my last video. Baby seems to have settled now and suddenly my mood feels so much better because she stopped. So 
it's reassuring that it isn't that I'm just having a mental breakdown. I think it is literally just the frustration from the pain. I just feel very, very exhausted. I think she uses all my energy reserves. So it's now been about four hours. I think she's tired herself out a lot. I do keep still feeling her, it's not like she stopped altogether, but they're coming maybe once every few minutes, which is infrequent for her. I got a few painful kicks maybe 15 minutes ago. I think she was maybe just having a wiggle in her sleep, very low down. Our new sweet chair has arrived. Woo! Oh god, it's huge. <laughs> We've got another pop. Oh, I can't reach. <laughs> My belly won't go over the box. <laughs> oh, that's so low. Wow, look how low that dips. That's like a lying down chair. Oh, how comfy does that look? Is it nice? Oh, mate, a bit of breastfeeding. <laughs> it is just like lying down. Oh. We've got the clouds outside and the clouds up here. Looks good. Nurseries come together. It's a bit of a mess at the moment, but look, we've got our books, we got our teddies. Oh, it's all so cute, little mobile. My baby blanket and dad. Little Missy's woken up again and has been rolling around constantly for maybe about half an hour now. I tried playing soft piano music against my belly. I've tried like massaging my belly. And every now and then she does that really painful low movement again. I just wanted to settle. Oh God, why doesn't she stop? I don't understand how she can be so active. Why does she possibly need to move this much? It's not even like she's just getting comfy. Oh, oh that hurts so much. Oh, I think it's a Braxton Hicks actually because my belly is solid. They're getting more and more painful, my Braxton Hicks. I went to visit my friend today for the first time since she had her baby. Her baby is now three weeks old. I feel like it's put me in a really good stead, not only because her baby is just the cutest little creature in the world, but also because she looked really good. She looked really healthy, really glowing, really happy. And she said life is so much more pleasant with a newborn than it was at the end of her pregnancy. And she's got so much more energy, even though obviously you get a bit more broken sleep with a newborn. Oh, I'm gone, baby. <sighs> Baby's hurting. <sighs> but she said everything just feels so rewarding, whereas I think pregnancy, she said she just felt very tired and very drained. And now I feel like I've got something to look forward to, because everyone always tells me how hard it is to have a newborn, and I've just been kind of thinking, oh, like, I'm not coping with pregnancy, how on earth am I going to cope with a newborn? So it was actually really, really nice to hear from someone who is in the newborn stage and has only positive things to say about it, because I need more positivity in my life. I need more people to tell me nice things that are going to happen rather than feeding me horror stories and ah, this pregnancy is definitely not helping my mood so my friend gave me some raspberry leaf tea which i can apparently now take because i'm 32 i cannot stand tea in any form <laughs> i'm gonna try it lovely <laughs> well that was climactic <laughs> Well, apparently it helps shorten the second part of labour. What part is that? I don't know. The hard part. <laughs> so I'm gonna try and do some raspberry leaf tea every day in the lead up to labour and see if it helps. <laughs> oh, she's I was up four times last night and my legs and pelvis were just hurting. We were gonna do the food shop and I wanted to try and get a bit of walking in. But as soon as I stood up, baby went really low and just caused me so much pain straight away. And then I just ended up having a massive cry, sat on the bedroom on my hands and knees. I'm just exhausted and in so much pain. And I really want to try and go do the food shop and just get that walking around in. But she's starting to hurt me again. I just feel so weak. I just feel on the verge of tears. So I want to get out of the house, put myself in a new environment. Oh, I think I'm having a Braxton Hicks, actually. My belly has gone rock solid. Oh. Oh. I'm 
just getting really fed up now. Okay, so I went to the supermarket and there were times when I was in so much pain I thought I was gonna cry and I, I had to stop walking and I was like keeling over. <laughs> but eventually the walking I think made her move position and since getting back from the supermarket, it's been bearable. I keep getting moments where I'm like, Ugh. but so far touch wood. <laughs> She's mostly been good. I think I'm having another Brexton Hicks, hang on. But I'm glad I did it and it put me in a better headspace. <sighs> so last night, little Missy mostly behaved. Today, I've had a few more moments where it's been painful, where she's gone really low. She's still very active, as you can see. Got a lovely bum just here. <laughs> There's been a couple of occasions where I've needed to get on my hands and knees and just ease her out of my low parts <laughs> but um so far she's been okay today so my mood is okay i'm actually currently writing my birth plan i've got my midwife appointment in a couple of weeks where they come and do our home assessment and run through the birth plan with us then but i want to have a head start so yeah feeling okay today it's nearly 10 o'clock at night she's still going Again. Please. Oh god, she's hurting so much. Pushing my fingers out like <laughs> she's down the side here as well. Oh. She's literally not stopping. I am utterly exhausted. I think I eventually nodded off about half past one. I keep finding like my joints lock up. So I got up at four, stretched my legs, did a bit of walking, got back in bed, six o'clock. I woke up again from baby kicking the hell out of me. And I ended up in the bathroom for a bit and going on hands and knees and then woke up again about seven. And then I went to work this morning. I've come back, I've just had a meeting now. I've got my yoga class in a couple of hours. I just feel absolutely exhausted and baby hasn't stopped moving all day. She's just been so active again. Her in me a lot. Oh god, this birth cannot come soon enough, I am telling you. I feel like I'm having a little bit of a, a wake-up call. I've spent so much time moaning about my pregnancy, but when I went to see my friend the other day, now that she's had her baby, something she said to me was that her and her husband keep telling themselves during the difficult crying times that their baby isn't doing it on purpose. It's the only way the baby knows how to communicate. And it was really nice to see that positivity. And I realize I've been very blameful of my baby so far. She She's been very painful today, but at my yoga class this evening it was my first class where I actually managed to get through the lesson without having to hold my belly or run to the toilet or <laughs> just being in pain in general. She seemed to sleep through it for the first time. And then just as I was coming out of my class and I spoke to her and was just like, oh, I hope you had a nice sleep and thanked her for being so calm. And I had this realization that talking to her nicely and thanking her made me feel really really positive. And then I felt a bit guilty because I was like, I've been the one encouraging my own negativity and I haven't given myself the space to think, you know, baby isn't doing this intentionally. She doesn't know any better. Admittedly, it's very, very hard to think like that when you're in constant pain. But I really want to take this now as an opportunity to concentrate on the practice of mindfulness because I think that will also help me come labour time as well. So I'm going to try my best to be positive going forward. I've just phoned triage because I noticed a couple of hours ago that my Braxton Hicks were getting incredibly frequent. Now I know I get a lot of Braxton Hicks anyway, but I was just in the car with my mum for like an hour and a half and I must have counted maybe 10 Braxton Hicks. They come in maybe every 10 minutes. So I just phoned triage, just looking for a bit of advice. And they asked me a few questions like, am I getting back pain? How frequently do I normally get them? Blah, blah, blah. She said, take some paracetamol and keep an eye on them over the next hour or two hours. If they stay the same, or if you get more, or if they become more painful, bonus back. But she said, if the paracetamol helps, then fine. It's nothing to worry about. So I've just had some paracetamol now maybe keep a little track of if I get any and what time I get them and, and stuff. Lightly the side. Like a roller coaster. <laughs> Just 
told her that like she's in the sides, she's in the top, she's in the bottom, she's in the middle. How are you literally everywhere? Ouch. Oh, she's got to come soon. She's just got to. I'm currently on hold to HMRC because I still haven't had my follow-up letter about my maternity allowance. So the first letter I had said, we'll write to you in the next 10 days to let you know how to up your maternity pay. And I haven't had that. So I phoned the number on the letter. This is the Department for Work and Pensions, apparently, that the letter came from. I was on hold for 41 minutes. And then when I finally got through, they were like, oh, you don't need us. We've now passed it on to HMRC, even though that's the number that's on the letter to phone so I've now been on hold for 15 minutes <sighs> But another thing, this morning when I woke up, baby felt very different, like she had changed positions. My belly felt big all round as opposed to down, so I don't know if she's gone like transverse and is now horizontal. She hasn't moved barely at all all morning, so I'm gonna see after lunch if she's moving much then, because sometimes she perks up when I eat, and if she still hasn't moved much by then I'm gonna phone triage and see if I can go in for reduced movements because it's not like her at all. Something just doesn't feel right. <sighs> Okay, so I've just got back from lunch and baby was really, really quiet for the first hour and then out of nowhere perked right back up again and was going nuts and it made lunch very, very difficult. But at least she's okay. She feels like she's kind of gone back to her original position now as well. I feel like I'm more this way with the this way. So I'm hoping that's a good sign and that she hasn't fully rotated and gone breach again. <sighs> I finally got through about my maternity pay, so I have to pay an extra £44, one-off payment, and then hopefully I get my full maternity allowance, which I think is something like £178 a week? I don't know. I mean, the woman on the phone couldn't confirm that, but that's what friends of mine have got, so I'm presuming, hopefully, I get the full amount if I pay that £44. Thankfully, Mason is still working. I think he gets two weeks paternity leave, so it'll be alright. Better than £27 a week. <laughs> oh. I managed to get out for a walk this morning. The baby started to drop really low again and she's now gone exceptionally low and I keep getting twinges that are so painful. My piles cleared up for a while and now they're back and worse and painful again. And I think it's from, again, the pressure of baby being low. I keep getting loads of Braxton Hicks as well. Now I don't know if this is relating to the raspberry leaf tea that I've started drinking in the evening now. I mean I always had a lot of Braxton Hicks anyway but I've been getting a lot more. I'm still waking up repeatedly through the night but today she's back to her usual self being all over my tummy, kicking every side. <sighs> At the moment she's all here like I can feel this bit here is solid. So this is obviously her bum and her back. And then her legs are over here because she keeps kicking me with like little, little feet. Her arms must be really low down here because it almost feels like where my ovaries normally are, I keep getting like little flicks. I say little, they're not very little anymore. This bit's really squishy. So she's not here. There's her bum rolling. She's like pushing herself off from here and here and every time she pushes there her bum comes out <laughs> it's like she's using me as a springboard <laughs> stand up and it, oh, it absolutely cripples me. <sighs> wonder where baby is. <laughs> I don't. 
tried bouncing, I've tried swaying, I've had paracetamol. <laughs> She just won't stop, but I don't know what to do. It's hurting so much. Ow! I don't know when to stop. So Last night was a tough night. I think I finally ventured back up to bed just after half three. I just gave up. I was like, regardless of whether I'm on the living room floor, the bathroom floor, the birthing ball, whatever, I'm in pain. Eventually, I must have drifted off. And then 5 a.m., I was woken up again by a baby. Eight o'clock, I was kicked awake again in so much pain. Like, she was so low again, it just kept making me wince. But we had to do the food shop again this morning, and I kind of made it my personal challenge to go out and do the food shop with Mason because it gets me out of the house, which is good for my frame of mind. And it's good to get a bit of walking in because I feel like it puts baby in a good position usually. I still went, but there were times going around where I couldn't even physically walk. I just had to stand there and kind of cross my legs and hunch over. The moment I even untensed my legs, the searing pain that went down through my groin was just unbearable and I nearly cried on a good few occasions. I cried when we got home. I ended up curling up on Mason's lap and eventually dozed off for I think he said about 20 minutes or so. I woke up to my mum ringing the doorbell and discovered that not only had I been snoring, I'd also been drooling. <laughs> so Mason has a big wet patch. I couldn't be less attractive in this pregnancy, dear lord. It's now 4pm and maybe only in the past half an hour has she settled to the point where I can get up, I can do stuff pain free, but I feel energyless. I just want her out. It's now 7.30 and she's just been hurting me so some paracetamol. Mason suggested that we phone the hospital, but I just don't know what we could do. I just don't know how to stop it. Okay. We've just been for a breastfeeding class at the hospital. I learned a lot, but then I feel like the first hour I didn't take in anything. <laughs> and I was like, Mason, I need you to be my ears. Because baby was just going absolutely nuts again. And I kept getting really regular Braxton Hicks, like every five, 10 minutes again. And uh, <laughs> my brain was just smushed. So Mason listened for like the first hour. <laughs> and then we went for a walk and I feel like that helped settle things a bit. So the second hour was a bit more productive. <laughs> and we had like a doll that we had to practice. With and, see why to get them to and, stuff. and then after we finished, I asked her about all the Braxton Hicks I've been getting because I just felt like crying again. So we went over to triage. I don't even know what was happening. She was, she was just asking about the frequency of your contractions, mm -hmm. the pain and what you've been doing to help and, and that kind of thing. Yeah, she said it's really normal and that I shouldn't be worried because although they're coming like regularly in segments, they're not like regular, regular. Because I think I get them like every 10 minutes for like a couple of hours and then they die off. And she said there's yeah. not really anything you can do. Yeah, she said it may just be that you have a sensitive uterus and so small things can set you off to have mm. Braxton Hicks. So I think this sort of takeaway was She said I need to rest more. Need more. More active rest, not just like sitting down when you're in pain. It's like sitting down before you get in pain. Yeah. To relax and stuff. She also felt baby and was like, I think baby's head up again. <laughs> yeah, but she's <laughs> she moving all the time. She just moves so much. <laughs> 
I wanted to touch on something a little bit more serious, which I haven't spoken about, but I feel like I should for other people who might also experience the same thing. But a few days ago when I had my really, really rocky day and just couldn't stop crying, I'm getting a Braxton Hicks and it hurts. I sat in the bath with Mason at the end of the evening and I was just sobbing my heart out. And I said to him, I worry that it's got to the point where I'm just in pain so much of the time that I'm just associating the baby with pain. And I'm starting to fear that when I give birth to her, I'm not gonna have a connection with her. What if I didn't love her anymore? What if I was never gonna love our daughter? What if there was no relationship there? Every time I look at my belly, all I think is I wish it was gone and I wish the pain was there and I wish everything was over and I realized as it's coming out my mouth how silly it sounds because of course I'm gonna love my daughter this is the family that I've dreamt of but I was so caught up in how much pain I'd been in for so long I just couldn't see any positivity in it I want to get started being a mother on good terms and I just didn't feel like I was heading in that direction but I broke down and I talked to Mason about this I got everything off my chest and Mason was amazing as always he said look I totally get it it's not gonna be that way forever you of course you're gonna love our daughter and if you are still struggling there's help blah 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 blah, blah. I'm not gonna repeat the whole conversation but he just completely snapped me out of it and the next morning when I woke up I was like <sighs> God, what was I thinking? But I just got so into my head and it was horrible. It was just such a horrible state of mind. But I feel like it's really important for me to talk about that because I'm sure I'm not the only person that's felt like that. And I definitely don't feel like that now, but it took talking about it to be able to reshape that thought in my brain. But I just wanted to be able to reflect on this part of the journey, even though it's a very, very negative part of the journey. Since my mental breakdown a few days ago from struggling with the pain, yesterday and the day before, Baby has actually been really nice to carry. <laughs> She's still been very active, but it's been a lot more controlled. So I get bursts of activity and then bursts of quietness and calmness, and that's been really nice. I've just had actual peace. <laughs> so the past couple of days, I've actually been in a much better mindset because I've been able to cope with it really well. This morning, she's been going very low again and very wriggly so i'm hoping that i don't end up in a lot of pain again today i don't know if it's like a sign of oh she's calming down now ready for labor or whether she's just building up to have another ballistic few days i don't know <sighs> oh it's hurting me <laughs> I realise I haven't done a belly update for a while as well, so let me give you... Hang on. <laughs> let me give you a belly update now that I am 34 weeks. Still no stretch marks, which is good, but I've been moisturising still every single day. It feels so tender to touch. <laughs> it feels bruised all over my skin, and sometimes even the fabric of my clothes hurts. One thing I've noticed recently is my saddle pain that I got, I think in my first or second trimester, is back. It's not necessarily my pelvis, it's like where you sit on a bike, which I think it is still pelvic girdle pain, and it wakes me up a lot in the night. Today, I feel like it's getting very painful to walk. I thought I was past that stage, but clearly not. I think she's got hiccups. <laughs> there we go. 34 weeks. I am absolutely full of cold today. <laughs> so when I went to the doctors a few days ago, the doctor that I saw had a cold. And I thought to myself, why isn't she putting a mask on? It should be a doctor's responsibility to put a mask on if they're ill, especially around vulnerable people. And I just thought to myself, I'm gonna get whatever she's got. And lo and behold, I feel awful. <laughs> so thanks, doctor. <laughs> Last week, I've been waking up repeatedly through the night with really bad joint pain. My legs get really painful at night, really stiff, like they're locking up. It's, it feels like arthritis and the pain wakes me up quite a lot. And I try stretching my legs out, I try bending them. It, the only thing that helps is getting up and actually walking around and getting some blood flow. Because during the day I'm fine, it's just at night and I've started noticing now my hip 
is very, very weak. Yesterday, I could barely put any weight on my hip as I was walking. So I don't know if I'm reaching like another hormonal part and all of my ligaments are going a bit softer again, but I don't know. So another thing I'm noticing now is whenever I go to the toilet, not for a wee, I'm finding it extremely painful in like my uterus and I think the action of like pushing <laughs> pushes baby really low because obviously she's already low as it is so whenever I tense I feel like it pushes her lower down and I get that insane pain in my lower groin for like 10 minutes after it's like it cramps and cramps and cramps and it's sometimes unbearably painful and it's not making me scared to go to the toilet now but like it's just getting really really unpleasant whenever I have to go to the toilet because I just know I'm going to be in so much pain so we just had our midwife appointment, our home birth assessment, so she came to the house this time. I'm really, really ill. <laughs> yeah, I had to wear a mask because the midwife was pregnant too, and I was like, I don't want to get her ill. So she kind of just talked us through our birth plan and what we expected to happen on the day, like whether we wanted them to be hands off or involved. And oh, she said we picked the birth pool up from 37 weeks, so I feel a bit more reassured about that. Yeah, that is better. Because I was panicking a bit that I wasn't going to have it in time. Yeah. So got a few things on the list for stuff to get like the hose and stuff like that and she also warned us she said if we do need to call an ambulance for any reason it might be a really oh, yeah, mild yeah. reason like we just might need some more stuff dropping off or whatever but she said to get the ambulance to come to us on a blue light fast basis she said we have to phone up and say there's a threat to life so she said just to warn you ahead of time there will probably not be a threat to life but if you hear us phone an ambulance and say there's a threat to life don't panic yeah. <laughs> She said, if you're not in advanced labour, you can just go in our own class. Just, yeah. She said, I'm very likely to have an irritable or sensitive uterus because of how many Braxton Hicks I've been getting. And because when I go to the toilet, everything cramps up really painfully. What did she say that was? Something like that my baby is probably very, very close to my bladder and my bowels. So when I need to go to the toilet, it's pushing baby's head up. And then when I go to the toilet, Baby's head moves, so you've got a lot of movement rubbing yeah, against and that's causing your uterus causing cramps yeah i thought that was kind of interesting and that made a, a whole load of sense so you were having slightly less movement last yeah so time. so baby baby's been feeling different the past maybe two three days like normally she's so crazy active and she hasn't been the past few days she's been very still with just like the bursts of slow movement well, i mentioned it to her and she said just go to triage today and get monitored if she's still moving that's that's good she said it could just be that she's changed position so you can't feel it as much so we're gonna have some lunch now yeah. and then go up to the hospital just just for a monitor bundle height measurement came out really big again i think like 150th centile but she was like it's obviously not that big so it's kind of in line with the last midwife's measurements so she said we don't need a scan basically <laughs> i'm not worried about the size of her but no it was a nice little appointment actually all good Oh, good. So we're on baby watch. You have to press this button when you feel it move. It's hard to tell. Normally they're really obvious. Yeah. Maybe the straps will make her behave slightly differently as well. Yeah. So now back from the hospital, I think I was monitored for about half an hour. I had movements for like the first 10 minutes and then nothing after that. But they were like, no, you're safe to go because the heartbeat was stable, everything else was showing okay. So they said it's probably just a sleep window. And I said, well, baby's normally really, really active. She doesn't even normally have still sleep windows. And they said, well, it could just be that her routine is changing or something like that. But they said everything looks fine. So they let me go. First midwife, we saw said that she's had lots of ladies in recently with reduced movements and they've all been ill like I'm full of cold so she wonders whether there's a new strain of viral infection I've started to feel her moving again since coming back from the hospital they are slower movements they're more subdued but perhaps it is just that she's in like a bit of a changing phase now because it's very nearly 35 weeks in so 
maybe she's starting to have like real sleep now as opposed to everything just being like subconscious movements and muscle spasms and things like that you know like reflexes I don't know the one thing that I did find quite interesting was on the heartbeat monitor on the baby whenever I got that really low pain that I get like where it feels like baby drops like right down into my vaginal canal the heartbeat monitor stopped it couldn't detect her and it was interesting seeing it happen in real time and being justified in that like what I'm feeling is actually happening because I'd start to get the pain and the heartbeat monitor would just come up with dashes like there would be no reading and I'd be like ow, 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 ow. and then eventually she'd come back and the heartbeat monitor would come back <laughs> I was like what I'm feeling is real but yeah hopefully all good and at least we got to experience monitoring because I haven't had monitoring in this pregnancy so that's another thing to tick off on the experience list I guess